Well, welcome back. As always, this is still Why in the Morning. Thank you so much for sticking with us. You're just in time for the next discussion of the day. And uh, it's all about youth and politics today, right here on uh, Why in the Morning. My name is Ram Aguko. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you today on this fine Monday morning, on this third day of October 2022. A lot is taking place in the country, and we want to take a look at some of these issues and put them into perspective. Now, even as we do that, I have with me a copy of the People Daily. And this is the paper that we shall just highlight uh, today as we take a look at what is uh, trending on uh, uh, this particular paper. Just a few stories uh, that are there. And uh, even as we, as we talk about this, to my far right, I am with Joshua Correa. She, I mean, he is a youth policy analyst. Karim Sana Joshua. Thank you. Are you feeling? I'm feeling good, thank you. Asana, Asana. And uh, next to him, I'm um, with Annie Shungwa. She is a, a strategy and finance consultant. Karim Sana Ann. Thank you so much for having me. How are you feeling? My, my, my Very dear? great. Thank you so much for finding time to join me. And of course, I value your feedback. Wherever you are watching us from, be, in, be part of this discussion, even as we start on matters concerning you and the nation. And on the front page of the People, People Daily, KRA is in limbo of a state house road. And this is the one, uh, this is the what we are going to start with. Because as we speak today, uh, two directives from President William Ruto and his deputy regarding Ashagwa have left the uh, KRA's hands tied in the war against counterfeit and uh, tax evasion. Uh, one senior KRA official told the People Daily that the agency is no longer pursuing new cases of tax cheats and deals in counterfeit as they await clear directions from the executive. And of course, sources say that KRA has slowed down on the crackdown uh, and, at, uh, pres and presently is only pursuing active court cases. What does this mean for the economy? Because this has left the door wide open for illegal imports that deny Kenya much needed tax. And uh, we have uh, this fear of upsetting the president and his deputy. Let me start with you, Anne. What do you think about this particular issue now the care is in limbo? Well, surprisingly enough, we are looking at a, a fight between two entities. We are looking at the local market and you're looking at the people who are bringing in goods, mm -hmm. which we are calling the export market. Yeah. Now, what happens is that uh, the people who are uh, buying and manufacturing local, they are going to have competition mm. because they will be competing with goods that are counterfeit, mm -hmm. goods that people probably they have gotten into the market yeah, yeah. using the legal ways, goods that probably are even cheaper than what the local market will be selling at. Mm -hmm. So what that means to a local trader or what that means to our economy is that we will forsake the local manufactured good for the sake of the import, which are a bit cheaper. But for KRA, what that also means is that there will be a reduction in revenue collection. Because remember, these goods are getting through the back door. These goods are getting through. They're not registered traders. They're not legal papers and documentation to have the goods in the market. Mm. So they cannot actually go after them to collect taxes. Mm -hmm. So mm. we are looking at the reduction of revenue and more so competition at the local market. And I'm looking at this affecting the economy in the long term. Um, uh, how bad can it go? Um, at the end of the day, we need money to come in to the country. We need money to, to bring uh, uh, our revenue up. This doesn't seem to be doing that. Everybody knows that the, the biggest uh, revenue, how the government gets money is through tax. Mm -hmm. And definitely, if there are no streamlined processes and structure mm -hmm. to allow us to collect uh, that tax, mm. that means we are looking at uh, eventually uh, year in, year out, reducing our tax collection. So the impact will def definitely be hard because the revenue will be reduced. But when you look at uh, if there are other ways, because if it calls upon promoting the local economy, it doesn't mean that there are no traders in the local economy yeah. who can legally put up their businesses and who can legally pay taxes mm. to avoid this gap. Yeah. So I, I would think the much of the attention will be focused on the local economy to allow them register so that they can legally pay the, uh, the taxes and let them run, the econ uh, let them, let them run their businesses. Uh, what I'm talking about is uh, if you look at case in point, 
the local businesses that are operating in Kenya, they could be doing well, but the environment is not conducive for them. So what does that mean? That they're also going to reduce in terms of ev evading and paying taxes. Mm -hmm. They would prefer not to have the licenses. Mm -hmm. Others would be trading without their licenses. Mm -hmm. That is reduction of revenue to the government. Exactly, exactly. There are others who probably would, would prefer uh, not to register legally, they run a business entity, a business name, a corporate name. These are sources that they are denying the government mm. in terms of revenue collection. And eventually, as you have said in the long term, is a reduction of revenue collection for the government. And I'm, I'm looking at counterfeits. You've, you've mentioned that, Anne, and the amount in terms of billions. We're looking at 100 that Kenya is said to lose annually to counterfeit. And let me come to you, Joshua. What are your thoughts in regards to this? And do you agree with what Anne has said? Um, are we going to see uh, the economy going down? Remember, one pillar that the president and his deputy was using during their campaign was the bottom-up economy. Yeah. They were talking about economic development. Does this promote that particular agenda? No, to start with, you know, <laughs> Anne is a business expert. So she looks at it from the standpoint of, of being a mm. business expert. Mm -hmm. I'm a political scientist, so I look at it from, from the point of politics and everything around it. Mm -hmm. For starters, in the past regime, the excuse of calling uh, the commodities of businessmen and the entrepreneurs counterfeit was an excuse for those close to power to make sure that they kill other businesses and they're the ones who control the business. Mm. So in as much as I don't stand for the idea of having counterfeit goods in our markets. But it's, a, it's necessary for us now to ensure that things are put on hold and we wait for the KRA reform. Because you remember when the president was in parliament, he proposed that uh, Kenya Revenue Authority be reformed to Kenya Revenue Services mm -hmm. to make it friendlier yeah. to people who are doing business. So I think it is necessary for us to uh, take it slow uh, wait and see, uh, wait for the reforms, so that as, um, as the reforms go on, we'll, we're going to see the white from the black. Mm -hmm. We're going to know which are the counterfeit goods and which are not. Because as at now, there's a thin line. We, do, we don't understand whether they are really counterfeit or there's someone in there who was running that business who called it counterfeit so that they can have space for their own, for their own goods to come in. You, 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 you're talking about politics, and yeah. I'm looking at... Uh, at um, uh, two instances here, the, D the president and the DP, mm -hmm. what they individually, what they uh, were talking about, the president said this, President Russo said, and I quote, that we have already agreed with them, that's the KRA, mm -hmm. that they will have decorum and respect and we will plan together with them so that every Kenyan pays their tax. End of quote. Now I'm looking at a few days later, the DP, Gashagwa, um, he was in Mombasa, and uh, he told the KRA to adopt friendly ways of dealing with tax disputes. And he accused the Jubilee administration, who is, uh, of course, uh, uh, tenuous now, it's, it's now uh, over, it ended. He accused it of using state agencies like KRA to create a toxic environment for businesses through unnecessary crackdowns. And now we are seeing crackdowns being okay. reduced. Yeah. They have gone to court cases. They have gone to court cases. Uh -huh. And at least now that we have a new regime, we can, we can start relooking at a lot of the things that, that were being done during the Jubilee government. And uh, to add on to what she said, we also live in a country where it's very expensive to set up business. So people will, will tend to use the back door to ensure that they, they make something for themselves. So we'll have a lot of illegal business and counterfeits. Mm -hmm. So on that again, uh, I, I support her in saying it's good that we look at the counterfeit. But before we go ahead and look at what is counterfeit from what is not, we have to make sure we are doing the right thing so that we don't punish people who are being wrongfully accused of being counterfeit traders when they're actually just entrepreneurs who are... So, 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 so do you agree with the, the DP when he said that uh, uh, the previous uh, regime was using agencies like KRA to create a very toxic environment for businesses? Yes. And I believe we are, we are not visitors in Kenya. We understand what happened. <laughs> like in the run-up to the general elections. All right, let me yeah. come to you. Your thoughts on that? Every, every ecosystem has partners. Mm. And the business ecosystem, the biggest partner is KRA. But apparently, 
that has not been the narrative on the ground. Mm. Every business operator has seen KRA as somebody who is after to kill my business. Mm. KRA had created a very harsh environment, especially for SMEs to trade. In terms of how they collect their taxes, they instill a lot of fear. So you will find a lot of SMEs, they have learned the act of having two books. What do mm. I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a mm -hmm. book that they give to the carry, <laughs> and there's a book that they actually show this is a reality that is on the ground. Yeah. Why they, the SME is doing this? It's because should you expose all your income? Should you expose what you're getting, even as little as it is? I am telling you, carry will come knocking your door. Mm. It doesn't mean that we are doing this to hide and not to trade in the, in, in the legal way. Mm -hmm. It's only that they have created what the DP has called unfriendly environment. Mm. We're supposed to be partners. We're supposed to be stakeholders in your business. We're supposed to create a conducive environment for you. But what have we done? We have created an animal to come and milk money from your business. So do, so, so do you think that uh, now that we're seeing uh, KRA's activity going uh, down low, now they are concentrating on case uh, on, on court cases. Do you believe that now businesses will come up, bottom up, the Wanjiku, the hustlers, will be able to promote their businesses? Let me for the business to promote, uh -huh. there's a lot of things that must come into play. Uh -huh. Just besides the carry, there's a lot of things that But th th does this play a big role? It will play a big role, especially if they put on the garment of we are friends, we are partnering with you when it comes to business it will mm. play a very big role because mm. the SME will be able to disclose this is my business, this is what I get. And also, they also look at how can we help in terms of the, the taxes. How do we help and not kill your businesses? Mm. What tax regimes are necessary? What tax planning measures can we put in place so that we don't kill you? So it will help in a very big way. And there are other elements that we are looking at in terms of growing what we are calling the bottom-up ap approach. Besides KRA, let's look at even, remember these SMEs who are trading, little have access to finance. Yeah. A lot of them are talking, I cannot access finance, I don't have coll collateral. Mm. I cannot access finance because they find me risky. I cannot access working capital. So what does that mean? They'll not be able to operate or not be able to buy machineries. So it's a couple of other things besides the KRA mm -hmm. that will also lift up the bottom, the bottom up economy. No, Joshua, your thoughts on that? On the same? Um, on financing, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa's plan has the Hustler Fund within it, and I think it's an ingenious idea to ensure that we have uh, the people at the bottom of the pyramid accessing financing that is not punitive. Mm. Because we can use an example of a mamamboga who wants to expand her business or want to, wants to buy stock. She'll have to go to the Shylock because banks do not have the systems to give loans to, to, to such people in the society. So they go to a, a Shylock. Then the Shylock will give them 1,000 shillings. Mm. At the end of the day, they're supposed to pay 1,100. That is 10% per day. Every year, that would be 3,640%. It is not sustainable. And as the president has said before, it is important that we look at these people at the bottom of the pyramid because they are the majority. And I know with the coming of Hustler Fund, it means lives are going to be transformed because no, nobody grows up saying, when I grow up, I want to be a mamamboga. Or maybe the, the only business I want to do is to sell vegetables or to do border border. So access to, good, to, to credit that is flex, flexible for them will ensure that maybe a mamamboga somewhere who has a dream of owning a shop that sells utensils or maybe import something or maybe someone who is sewing clothes and wants to start designing will have access to get the money so that they can expand their business. Mm -hmm. So I believe the Hustler Fund is going to transform businesses and even apart from them getting the loans, they're also going to transform what they do from, let's say, they, they can bring the ideas to, to fruition. All yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, I want us to move here to, 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 to another thing. But of course, um, I welcome you from wherever you're watching us from to engage with us. We are looking at one of the most recent raids that uh, was conducted by the KRA in uh, Athi River and uh, Thika. This was uh, earlier on in, in August uh, uh, before the new government uh, took over. Uh, you know, we have seen so many raids done by KRA, 
high value products such as alcohol, ethanol, uh, cigarettes, petroleum products, motorcycles, and uh, many motor vehicles, uh, uh, vehicle parts uh, are top of the list of the most smuggled goods that KRA has seized in the recent past. What are your thoughts in regards to this particular action by government uh, uh, towards KRA? Remember, sources say that KRA has slowed down on crackdowns uh, that it has and are presently only pursuing active court cases. Is this uh, something that you support? Engage with us. The hashtag is why in the morning. At Rama Google, which is my handle, and at Y254, the official session handle. I want us to move on to, to yet another issue. The president was in Homer Bay. Bold move, though, after winning the election, um, he yesterday was uh, returning to uh, Raila Odinga's uh, backyard. This is uh, now 11 months after his uh, motorcade was stoned, remember. It was at that same same place. And of course, this is uh, him promising to liberate the region from poverty. Uh, the, the President Ruto, also accompanied by his, uh, the CS Domini for Information and ICT, Eli Dowalo, attended uh, a church service in Homa Bay before addressing peaceful crowds at the main terminals. The President asks opposition leaders in Nyanza to work with him to fulfill his development agenda. Uh, uh, still on you, Joshua, what do you think about this move by President to um, you know, go and even uh, camp at uh, Homer Bay? I was looking at uh, what he did when he was addressing the residents, um, uh, a crowd, uh, after the church service uh, that, he took, that took place at the IC in uh, Homer Bay, giving so many promises. What do you think about that move? Uh, I think it was a move that was necessary. It, it is a move that is it's a sign of goodwill and commitment. Mm. Because now that he's president, he's the president of all Kenyans. Those who voted for him and those who did not. And it being one of the very first trips he has made as a president, it, it shows signs of a man who is committed to serving all Kenyans. Mm. A man who, who looks beyond the political rhetorics of regions and tribe and all that. So I believe it's a good sign. And we saw when he was in Homer Bay, he had their, their, their development agenda at hand. He understood the roads being built. He understood, he, he understood they needed water. He, under, he talked about cotton and, and everything that the people of, of Homer Bay want in terms of development. Mm. Because now Kenyans are moving away from looking at a leader from a point of, this is from my region, I'm from my tribe. Kenyans are looking at leaders in terms of their agenda and, and their performance. Because in five years, Kenyans will have a marking scheme. And they will say, President Ruto, you promised us this. You have fulfilled this. Maybe you haven't been able to do this. And what are the reasons? So it is important that he goes there and he also takes development to them. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in the past, we, we, we come from a history of if you're not in government, you don't, you don't get development. You're, mm -hmm. you're out here in the cold. Yeah. And I think it was a smart move and it was... It, it, it shows maturity in leadership. Mm -hmm. and it's maturity a very good thing. And, yeah. and, and, and I'm looking at this move still. It was in Kondele. The yeah. last time the, uh, uh, Ruto went to Azimio area, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, the Azimio zone, yeah. it wasn't that, that pleasant. Mm -hmm. But this time mm -hmm. around it was a bit peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, what do you make of that? But just also to add on to what he said, uh, mm. I'm looking at the president visit like, uh, and using the analogy of a CEO, you have different branches that you need to visit for the success of the organization. Yeah. And you'd want to leave a legacy. So you will not be limited to the branches that you have a liking for. You will mm. tend to spread your, uh, your influence, uh, spread your leadership, cutting across. Because every branch will have, uh, ultimately is going to produce to the success of the organization. Mm. So for him, he is entitled to move around in the different parts of the country because he's a president. Mm -hmm. And uh, as he has said, he's a president, whether you voted him or not. So he has a mandate when it comes to moving and also when it comes to influencing the development in every particular region. Uh, but as the question that you have asked, uh, what do you think about uh, the kind of peace, the reception that he received in different places? Yeah. Uh, I think now slowly we are maturing. Uh, mm. During the political or the campaign season, it was a bit heated. 
Uh, I was also on the campaign trail. And yeah, I remember I you vied for a seat. Yes. Yes, I was vied for the Kikuyu Ward uh, MCA seat. Yeah. Uh, and as the only woman on the ballot paper. Mm. And I can tell you the kind of perception, the kind of reception uh, during the campaign season is very hostile. Very hostile. That is a point where Wanjiko knows that I am entitled. And the next time I'm going to see these people mm -hmm. will be five years. So I must stamp <laughs> my authority now. Now. So uh, but you find after you have gotten into office, the story changes. Mm. People want to work with you. Everybody is looking for a meeting with the president. Every group, every, every organization, every entity is trying to look for a meeting with the president. Mm -hmm. The hostility that was there before now changes because yeah, we recognize yeah. there is somebody in office, somebody that we must work with. Mm -hmm. But uh, there prior, it was more like a competition. So we must show, we must stamp our authority uh, because you have come to our territory. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think this narrative, uh, in terms of the hostility, the perception of the Wanjiko, should not be something that is seasonal. It should be something when it comes to having a neutral campaign period, when it comes to the reception of the people, should be, we are friends. Mm, it, mm. And I'm not being you that you're coming to me after five years, I will not see you anymore. Yeah. We need to look like we are partnering in this journey. So uh, I need to, to actually receive you in a way that is, will allow us to start working together. Mm. But for it to change, it requires a lot of education when it comes to citizen participation and citizen education around campaign, around your right, around your involvement in politics, around your demands as a right as a citizen, the need for that education. I love what you said because the president said this, and I quote, I want to thank the people of Nyanza for the peace they demonstrated during and after elections. I promise to work closely with your elected leaders to implement the economic plans we have for the region. Mm -hmm. Means now we are seeing a developing nation, a developing or a, a, a growing democracy. Mm -hmm. you, you, you believe so? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, we have a long way to go, but I believe that we have the goodwill. Kenyans are tired of playing the kind of dirty politics that we used to play, the kind of hostility. Now we are playing politics based on agenda, not based on region, based on territory or boundaries, but based on the agenda. Mm. So there is a change when it comes to the, our democratic space and when it comes to our involvement. Mm. Yes. All right. Uh, jo jo Joshua, you, 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 your thoughts? Um, some leaders were absent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in this meeting yeah. and it brought in some conversation and uh, these leaders included the governor mm -hmm. for Homer Bay mm -hmm. but she tweeted and she said that uh, I am out of the country on official duty and will therefore be unable to join present the president for the church uh, service and have uh, communicated the same to the head of state uh, that is what she tweeted yeah. people com complained about about uh, about uh, um, you know Wanga's uh, absence in this particular uh, uh, region. Uh, I mean session on uh, on on Sunday yesterday. What do you think about that, Anne? Well, mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's very it's a very thin line. Uh, mm -hmm. The president is touring your place, and I, I expect you to come and receive me. But uh, I love her honesty in terms of saying that uh, she, uh, she said that she's away on official duties. And uh, she wished the president a very good visit in her region. Uh, but generally, it, I think it's an issue of, you know the itinerary of the president. It doesn't come as a surprise that you'll be visiting my area. And I'm sure that had already been communicated and plans had, should have already been prepared. Who is going to receive the head of state? Uh, you, don't, you don't expect the head of state to come visit your region and you send junior officers or you're also missing in action because he doesn't do this everyday visit into your region. Mm, mm. Uh, but uh, let, me, let me just cast the, uh, the <laughs> benefit of doubt. Probably yeah. the itinerary was not shared in time mm. and that's why she was not present. So, so, some were saying that uh, they never knew uh, about the uh, DP's, um, the president's visit until late in the evening on, uh, on Saturday. Like the, the member of parliament that that, that was there, uh, uh, he said that uh, he this is um, this is for uh, MP Opondo Kaluma. He said he was he was not even aware about it that's till a, late. That's a question of now the communication department when mm. it comes to the the department that liars the the the, the logistics and the travel of, of the president. Probably if they didn't share out, mm. 
mm. then who is to be blamed? Mm. It's a question of do we believe the MP? Do we believe what the communication department said? But I think uh, over and above that, we are looking at uh, a head of state. And we are looking at not having impromptu visit. I doubt whether a head of state can have impromptu visit. All right. Joshua? Yeah, I think um, saying they, they did not know is a lie. They're just playing politics with, uh, with the whole visit of the president. And I think we should not sacrifice development on the altar of loyalty. Because as you understand how, how politics works within Nyanza is that you have to be loyal to one person. If you seem to be with the opponent, mm. then you're a traitor. All right. So All I right. think what they're doing is to ensure that they maintain their political influence because we understand their, their party leader is pretty powerful in Nyanza. Mm. But it is not right for them to sacrifice development mm. on the altar of being loyal mm. or not, not being aligned with one person. Because uh, at the end uh, of the day, this is development that is coming to the people of Homabi. Everybody I'm, wins. I'm so. looking at what you've said, mm -hmm. development. Yeah. Um, for instance, uh, Ruto said that the government will commission a mega project for constructing 5,000 low-cost houses. Yeah. 5,000 low-cost houses. And uh, this is uh, the project that he said will be done in phases from November in which 400 houses will be built. The second phase will see 2,000 houses being constructed next year. And he said, and I quote that, I will be back to Homer Bay next month to launch the first phase of the low-cost houses construction project and that we are also going to improve the sewerage system and the water plant in Homer Bay to make that Homer Bay a better place. He pledged that his administration will complete over 200, 200 kilometers that was started by Uhuru's government he talked about building, uh, uh, developing roads. We are looking at the Mbita, Kiabuya, Magunga, Sori Road. We are looking at uh, 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 the road that moves from uh, uh, Pala, Kadienge, Kad Kadel Road, that is in Karachuonyo uh, constituency. We are looking at uh, uh, a junction Karabok, Adiedo Road, to, that, that is in Kasipul. All these promises they promised, uh, that were promised by the president Will they be achieved? I believe they will. Mm. I believe they will. Because this is a president who has a track record. We, we can go back in history and look at when he was the Minister for Agriculture. That is uh, the time when the subsidy was introduced and fertilizer was cheap. And that is the same, same time that the industries of Mumias, Nzoya and all other sugar industries within Western region are performing well. Mm. So this is a president who, who has performed before. And I have no doubt that now that he's president and uh, has more power, we're going to achieve more. And if you look at this uh, development projects, for example, housing. Housing is going to create a lot of jobs for the youth in Homer Bay. Mm. Because apart from the people, apart from the youth who will be working on the buildings, we'll have the, the ones who sell doors, we'll have the ones who sell locks, we'll have wardrobes, all kinds of artisans will get jobs from there. And I all believe right. it's a good opportunity for the people of Homer Bay. Mm. And, and, and 2,000 houses being constructed next year, 200, uh, uh, 400 that will be built. We are looking at a target of 5,000 low-cost houses mm. and the roads. Mm. Now, is that kind of I, I think it's a question of prioritizing. And, and, mm. and I like how the DP mentioned yesterday, there's a lot on their plate. And uh, it's a question of looking at which one has the highest impact in terms of uh, to the general economy. Mm. Uh, and also looking at they have limited resources, so we cannot do everything. Uh, so we have to face the kind of development that we are talking about. Uh, and I, I like that the key aspect that he was talking about, we need to prioritize uh, the education, the CBC. We need to prioritize the fertilizer and the production and the cost of living. We need to prioritize. So for me, the, it, all of them are achievable, but let's prioritize. Mm. Besides prioritization, mm -hmm. we need to have a, a, an implementation plan when it comes to, do we have the right people who are going to drive this agenda? Mm -hmm. Do we have the right team? Have they bought into the vision? Do, they, do we have the right structure? Because they can make this pronouncement, but when you go on the ground, there are no structures to implement this. Mm -hmm. So it becomes an issue. So uh, uh, it, it's possible, but let's put the right system, let's put the right people, and let's prioritize. I hope we'll not see the same videos that are turning in the previous regime. 
you remember we will build this stadium here yeah. videos those videos that are trending <laughs> i hope we will not see them this time round <sighs> yeah. hopefully let me <laughs> hopefully 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 i want us to move to uh, to just get your thoughts in, the, in this final discussion here we are looking at the national assembly and the senate that will tomorrow start uh, the official business with the formation of the house business committee set to be the first agenda uh, the both houses will will approve names submitted by the majority and the minority uh, parties or coalitions to form the committee and remember that if the house adopts members to form the uh, the house business committee it will start adjourned it will stand adjourned to allow new members to go for a retreat to prepare Wednesday's more, uh, uh, morning order paper and subsequent days. But here, yeah, members are set to approve them submitted by the majority and minority parties or coalition. Uh, let me start with you, Joshua, in regards to this. National Assembly, Senate, the bicameral houses are going to, to start their official businesses tomorrow. Your thoughts? My, my thoughts, I think the, M the members of parliament have a lot on their plate. Mm -hmm. And it will only be fair that they prioritize the, they prioritize the needs of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Because we remember even before they were sworn in, there were rumors that they wanted more, more, more money to be paid to them. So I think uh, they should look at Kenyans and the problems we're in right now as a country. There's a lot of policy changes that we need to ensure that our economy is in all inclusive. So they should hit the ground running and ensure that we get what is right mm -hmm. and we get value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get value for what we give. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Your thoughts are uh, uh, now that the House committees are uh, uh, the top of the MPs agenda? Um, I think, uh, as you said, there is a lot on their plate, but it seems like uh, most of the government activities have, have been put on hold mm -hmm. because we don't have people. Uh, I listened yesterday to the DP saying that uh, uh, we cannot move because we still have the past regime in the offices. So it's like we are waiting for the names to be approved. Mm. And I'm thinking this will unlock, especially unlocking the development plans that they had for the citizen. Mm. This will unlock and also even allows the Kenyans to start gauging are they performing. Because right now they feel like their hands are tied. They can't move until the names have been approved. Uh, besides the names being approved, as he has mentioned, it's an issue of also looking at how do we are in the assembly right now. There's a lot of expectation. Uh, there's a lot of uh, the narrative of the hustler that this is a government that involves everybody. There's a lot of expectation we have placed on them. And we hope that they are going to rise above it. Let it not be for their selfish gain. Mm. Let it not be, it's about me, it's about increase of incentive, increase of salary, but let it be about growing the economy. Yeah. So we have put a lot of expectation on them mm -hmm. in terms of delivering the priority and the promises that they had given to the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. That is uh, uh, what we are expecting. Remember, um, already the nominated MP, John Buddy, uh, said the Register of Political Parties and the little had uh, clarified the issue and uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa members should be contented with the minority status. Uh, what is uh, it that we should be expecting in terms of, how of the House Business Committee? Remember, the, the House Business Committee, Committee consists of the Speaker, who is the chairperson, the leader of majority party, the leader of minority party, and not less than 21 and not more <coughs> than 29 members that consist of the House business committee if the house rejects the nominees it will stand adjourned until the speaker notifies members for another sitting which must be at least to, uh, uh, 12 hours before the sitting uh, this is uh, is what we are expecting to see tomorrow at the national assembly uh, at, uh, and, and of course uh, generally in the parliament where we are looking at the House Business Committee set to be the top of our MPs agenda. I want us to bring this discussion to a close and I want to give you uh, both of you time to have a final word to talk to Kenyans. What would be your parting shot? I uh, will start with you, Joshua, to talk to your fellow youths uh, <coughs> in regards to what we have discussed and any other that, that comes in your mind. What's your parting shot? Uh, my parting shot would be this. <clears throat> To my fellow youth, 
I think it's important for, for all of us to take part in political processes. In the past, uh, these past elections, the, there was a lot of laxity of the youth to come out and take part in political processes and to vote and to ensure that they have the right leaders. So I call upon all youth to ensure that we take part in these processes, that we, we come up with ideas, we drive policy change, because if we don't do it for ourselves, nobody will. If we have these ideas, then we have to come forward and make sure that we're the ones pushing them. So apart from that, I have nothing else to say. There's a lot of hope, and I wish the new government well. Mm -hmm. And I know that they're going to perform. And uh, no doubt about it, in the next five years, mm -hmm. as we get to 2027, we'll have transformed greatly. So right. thank you so much. All right, thank yeah. you so much. Uh, Anne, final word. Uh, yes, same as to add what, what he has said. Uh, it's just call upon the youth to rise up. Uh, let our voice be heard as youth. Uh, I remember during the campaign trail, the, and also during the campaign period, the youth did not come out to vote. The youth were not involved. The youth just sat back and said, let's wait and see. Mine is to encourage you that you have a critical role to play when it comes to the development of the area. The other issue is about the unemployment. I can tell you during the campaign trail, the cry that was on the ground was about unemployment. I would like to encourage the youth. It's not about the blue collar job. There's a lot of creativity and a lot of innovation that is on the ground. All that we need to do is to harness it. What do I mean to harness? You need to have the right people, the right mentor to guide you and to hold you. You don't need even a lot of money. You just need the connections. And the connections, I am seeing a lot of platform people willing to guide and mentor the youth. So rise up, get out, don't go into depression. Because there's a lot of youth who are going into depression, health mm -hmm. issue, and also issues of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Mine is to reach out to the youth and there's hope, but you must play a part. You must play a part in terms of identifying yourself and knowing what do I want out of my life. All right. That will be my part in short. Asante sana. Thank you so much, Anne. That is, that, that is uh, Anne uh, Shungwa, who is uh, a strategy and finance consultant, and uh, uh, Joshua Korir who is a youth policy analyst. And uh, uh, you, you vied for the MCA seat at uh, Kikuyu Ward. Kikuyu Ward. Yes. Hope all is well. Apparently, I did not clinch the seat, ah. uh, but, 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 but I got a good, in terms of limelight and people knowing me, mm. uh, and uh, a good space because uh, I resonated with the women, I resonated yeah. with the young youth, mm. and hopefully come the next time I will be given a chance mm. to serve them. Thank you so much. Yes. And, and, and Joshua, political science student. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Asana, Asana. Thank you so much for, for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for, Thank having, you for us. having us. Right. And of course, that brings us to the end of this uh, discussion right here on Why in the Morning. It has been all about matters concerning youth and politics. My name is Ram Maguko. We are taking a short break. But remember, we still have more waiting for you after this uh, short break right here on Why in the Morning. Brian Sacco will be coming up with the next discussion of the day. May God bless you. May God bless the work of your hands. Let's take a short break. We'll be back in a bit.